and the wicked. There it is. God will judge the righteous and the wicked. How can God put Christians through the tribulation, even to the death and to be, to be righteous? 2 Timothy 4.8 says, The Lord is the righteous judge. Revelation 19.11 says, In righteousness he doth judge. So what is coming is righteous. And it's right. And it's of God. And God is going to bless in it. How is God going to bless in that? You watch. The benefits of being an overcomer. You see, without the testing, without the trouble, then we can't become the overcomer that we want to become. Revelation 2.7 says, Him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. He will not be heard of the second death. I will give him to eat of the hidden manna, Revelation 2.17, and will give him a white stone, and the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Revelation 2.26, He that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. He shall, not be cl he, he shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, and I will write upon him my new name, and there's a lot of really, really good benefits to being an overcomer. He will, he will grant to sit with me in my throne. If you're an overcomer, how do we become an overcomer? And they, became, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. What did that just say? Those people, they're willing to die for my name, will be an overcomer. There's three points. There's three requirements to become an overcomer. And I've asked to become an overcomer. Blood of the Lamb, word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Hey, this is just a lousy old body that's not even going to last very long. I heard it said this way. <clears throat> Why should I not be willing to give up what I cannot keep to get what I cannot lose? Let me say it again. Why should I not be willing to give up what I cannot keep, this old lousy body of ours, to get what I cannot lose. The whole purpose of this time on earth is to find out where we're going to spend eternity. And our best bet is to die for the name of Jesus and get that highest crown, to become an overcomer. It says we get to sit with him in his throne if we die for his name. Lord, here am I. That's the only way I want to die. I want to be an overcomer. See, with that kind of an attitude, the devil can't scare you. If we were to be taken out before the testing, how would we have the opportunity to become an overcomer? Got some good points. All right, now I want you to keep this in mind. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you, what are the fruits of the pre-trib rapture doctrine? What are the fruits? Matthew 17 says you'll know them by their fruits. What are the fruits? 1 Timothy 4.1 the Spirit speaketh presently that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Be careful of what you preach and teach. So, when is the early and latter rain sent down together? After two days. It's sent during a time of corn, or another place, wheat, wine, and oil. Corn, wheat, wine, and oil. When there's no more reproach, when they remove the northern army, when it's full of wheat, wine, and oil. When is that? When is that he removes the northern army? Well, Dimitri Dudeman said that the fall of America would start with an internal revolution and America started by the communists. Some of the people would start fighting against the government. The government would be busy with internal problems. Then from the oceans, Russia, Cuba, Nicaragua, Central America, Mexico, and two other countries would attack and defeat America. Then God would raise up China, Japan, and many of the nations. They'd go against the Russians. They'd defeat the Russians. They'd back the Russians to the gates of Paris, where they make their peace treaty, but they make the Russians their leader. Then, under the leadership of the Russians, it's not that they want to, it's that God makes them. This is the hook in the jaw of Ezekiel 38 and 39. God makes them go down to attack Israel. When they attack Israel, Israel can't counter the help of the Jews in America, so they cry for Messiah. Messiah returns on the clouds, destroys the armies of the earth. When does that take place? At the very end. So when are we raptured? At the very end. After two days, after 2,000 years. It's during a time when the corn, wine, and oil, when it's a time of harvest. Jesus said the harvest is the end of the earth, when there's no more approach. In other words, Israel has been cleaned up. The Jews have returned home. The Jews have their land back. They, he has already removed the northern armies, Ezekiel 38 and 39. When is the early and latter rain? When I'm in the midst of thee, I'm the Lord thy God and none else. Dreams and visions, blood, fire, pillars of smoke, dark, 
sun, dark, moon, and blood at the very end. When is the northern army removed? He said the Russian spies have discovered where the most powerful missiles are in America, and I already quoted that, so I'm going to skip by that. Isaiah 28, 9 says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And if you don't have things lined up in the scriptures, then you could be getting doctrines of devils. And that's, that's what we have to be careful of, brothers and sisters, not to believe the doctrines of the devils. What is the fruit of the pre-trib rapture doctrine? Does it make people get closer to the Lord? No. Does it make people live a cleaner life? No. Does it make people witness more? No. Does it make people learn end time prophecies? No. What is the fruit? What is the good that comes from a pre-trib rapture doctrine? Church, le church leaders don't have to deal with complaining members. Church leaders don't have to know or teach Bible prophecy. The church can sleep until trouble hits. The great falling away can still be fulfilled. What is the fruit of the pre-trib rapture? It does not help people to overcome by the word of their testimony, by the blood of the Lamb, and it does not prepare people to love not their lives unto the death. It prepares people to be angry when it doesn't happen. Angry at their pastors. Angry at their churches. Angry at their denominations. Angry at the left behind books and so on that uh, try to to teach such uh, doctrines. What are the fruits of the pre-trib? Well, you don't need to know prophecy. You don't need to fear the Lord. You don't need to witness because they're going to get saved after the rapture. You don't need to go to church to learn to preach the gospel. It produces Laodicean Christians. Nothing good for the church or the kingdom of God comes from teaching pre-trib rapture, except you get to sell a lot of books, you're accepted by the pre-trib majority, and you won't get caught, kicked off of radio and TV stations. I'll let that soak in just a minute. The rapture can't happen before the Antichrist, as I've already said. The falling way has to take place first, and then the man of sin be revealed. All right, now, what can the mustard seed parable teach us about the timing of the rapture? Let's look at it. Now, before I get into this, I want to give you some, some understanding here. Wheat represents saved Christians. Tares are the lost. Corn represents the church or the saved. Wine is the Holy Spirit. Oil is salvation. Harvest is the end of the world. And mustard seed is the church or the saved. He said, Whereunto shall we liken to the kingdom of God? Or wherewith comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, it is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. When it is sown, it groweth up. Pre-trib rapture, not let the mustard seed come to maturity, by the way. And become greater than all the herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the earth may lodge under the shadow of it. Now, let's look at the pre-trib rapture scriptures. In other words, the, the point, I, I should back up, I, I want to make a point there. The point is that the mustard seed teaches us that we would not come to a harvest until the very end of the growing period. And you see that the tribulation is a growing period, a massive growing period, for the church, and a lot of people will be saved in the trouble ahead.